the, the mindset of a fighter is the key to everything. If you don't take care of business, you can't take that next step. So you gotta do what you gotta do. This kid's gonna be something. He's gonna be something special. You know, I'm not picky. I'll fight anybody. Robert Guerrero outside the ring is even more special. You gotta put out what God put into you, and you know, God's put a lot into me. Kind of unfair that we're, that we're praying for Robert, not the guy that he's fighting. Uh, it's like flipping the light switch. Just go into that fight mode. It's like having a horse, you know, with uh, blinders on, just get in there and do what I gotta do. He's been knocking at the door for, of greatness. And I think that if he can just, if we can just get him on a roll, get him going, I think he has the potential of being a superstar. You're the champ, you're the, you're the racehorse, you're the Lamborghini, let's go, baby. He was a young pup back in the day. Now you fight the man. Let Robert do what he needs to do, Father God. Hi, welcome to Carol on Creativity. I'm Carol Peters, and today I am very excited about my guest. Robert Guerrero, <laughs> former lightweight champion of the world three times, and he and his family I've known since high school, since Robert was in high school. I had his brother Ruben and uh, Victor in class. Ruben was um, in my class lots and lots of times, great artist. Uh, know your family, and um, if it's one thing I remember about your brothers and you, is that you guys are always very respectful. You're just super, super nice and uh, class acts, every one of you. I know your family's very supportive of you, Robert. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're, they're very supportive of me, and uh, everybody's proud of me. And, you know, it, it's nice. It's nice to have a, a strong family that's uh, always behind you. Just give us a little bit of background on your pathway to becoming a fighter. You know, what? That's kind of an, a profession that not very many people get into. So how did it happen for you? You know, my older brothers were, were boxers, and, uh, you know, they used to fight amateur uh, growing up. Mm -hmm. So watching them, I wanted to be like my older brothers, yeah. getting in the ring and, and following them to the gym. And, man, as soon as I was old enough, I got in and, and just fell in love with it and just went from there and just kept carrying it on. And, and here I am now. How'd you get the name The Ghost? I got the name The Ghost uh, when I was small. And once I got into the gym, uh, I was able to start sparring and boxing and just being so fast in the ring. My hands were, uh, were, were quick and, and I'll just throw punches. I'll get off to the side mm -hmm. and throw more punches. I'll get off to the other side, throw more. And um, I was in and out. And by the time uh, I come back to the corner, <laughs> the coaches the coaches in the gym were like, man, he's like a ghost. He's here, he's there, he's now, he's, he's everywhere, and, and the guy can't see him. So ever since then, uh, they started calling me the ghost, and it's stuck ever since. That's neat. That's, that's a great kind of feel, too, you know, where it, it's in and out, and yeah. it, works, it works for the fighter. It, wor it works great for boxing, because you hardly get punched. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the less you can get hit in boxing, the better it is. Yeah, if you had like one thing you could say was a really great influence in your life besides your family, um, something that maybe took you to another level. The biggest inspiration in my life is, is, is you know, having God on my side and, and guiding me through whatever I go through because, man, I mean, it makes me just light up, light up when I get in that ring, so. Yeah, and you've had a lot of battles to fight other than just in the ring, you know, with, oh, yes. with uh, your wife. And um, so I think without that in my life as well, there are times when I wouldn't have been able to handle it, you know. How does it um, feel to work um, under Golden Boy Product is it produ promotions. promotions? And Oscar uh, De La Hoya is the owner, and how does that feel? I, it's, That's you know, kind of cool, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's nice to be, um, you know, have uh, Oscar De La Hoya as a promoter. And, um, you know, it's great for boxing. Uh, you know, he was, he, he was a fighter, and, and he knows how it is to, to get ready for fights mm -hmm. and, and leading up into a fight and how rough it is. So, um, you know, he knows how to take care of his guys where, you know, there's other promoters right. that, that have never been fighters, and they've just always been in the business part of boxing. Mm -hmm. So they just treat you like, you know, a fighter. Mm -hmm. which, you know, he treats you with respect and, and takes care of you every time you go out to fight. He makes sure everything's done and, and, and ready. So since I've signed with him, I mean, you know, my, my career just 
just went through the roof and, and getting mm -hmm. fights I need, fighting on HBO, uh, Showtime, uh, you know, get getting on these big networks and, and um, you know, he's 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 the guy you want to be with. He's the yeah. guy you want in your corner. Did he ever say anything to you that that left an impression, especially when you're coming here today to paint? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> you know, well, one of one of his interviews uh, after a fight, they asked him, uh, you know, people think boxers are just, you know, guys that get in there and beat each other up, and he's like, no, no, it's you know, we're like artists, you know, our footwork, our hand speed, everything's so precise and. and, and worked on we're like artists where you could put paint on our feet and you know our ring is like you know an art canvas he's all we could paint you a picture just fighting a fight and uh mm -hmm. you know it, it's true because i mean every step is really really worked on and everything yeah. is is all down to technique like like painting i mean mm -hmm. you got to have the right techniques and and everything has to be right to to paint an awesome picture and that's the way it is in boxing. I mean, to have a great fight to win world championships, I mean, you got to have that art and that you got to have that talent that you work on to put into to having great fights. So. Right, discipline. You know, today we're going to do a, a portrait of you. And um, I airbrushed. I started out very simple. There's a couple ways to do it. We did. You can do a stencil or freehand, but the one we're going to actually do today is very, very advanced. And I was thinking in my mind, is when I was cutting all these little pieces out prepping for the show, it's kind of like all the preparation that went into it was a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you before you go into a fight. I mean, we're going to do this now quick because we've prepped for it. When you go into that fight, all those months of, of you know, running, hitting the bag, sitting up, you know, doing, I saw your uh, documentaries, man. I mean, like, making me tired looking at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're 100% you're, you're right. I mean, there's so much that goes into just getting ready for a fight and, um, you know, hours of prepping and working on different things, different techniques, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going the rounds, hitting the bags, and, you know, all that's preparation to be ready for the fight. And, the hard part is in the gym doing all the work mm -hmm. and all the prep work where when you do get in there, I mean, that's the easy yeah. job. That's the fun. That's where it's time. Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready for this. Yeah, so. we got this many minutes. Yeah. Let's put what we did, you know, see yeah. what happens. Leave it all here. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we got 45 minutes in that ring. We got 12 rounds. This, you know, yeah. this is what we've been prepping and working for. Now it's time to let it go. So yeah, that's where the fun starts. Awesome. Well, I watched your last fight. Um, uh, I was in New Jersey with uh, Vicente Escobedo, and yes. I, um, I was amazed, because I've known you now since high school, mm -hmm. and um, I've watched your fights, you know, if not in person, then on TV or on, you know, on the inner tube, or not inner tube, <laughs> 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 internet, um, <laughs> and um, in this fight, when I paint someone, I'm, or when I look at an athlete, I always look at the eyes. Mm -hmm. And I was watching you that night. When you came out, you had a focus that I really hadn't seen before. And it was like, you I knew you were going to win the minute mm -hmm. you stepped out there. To me, it was like the boy in you had gone, and the man mm -hmm. was in that ring that night. I, I was, you know, I was just like watching you, like that intensity was there, that focus was there and I thought there's no way this guy's going to have a chance in the world. Did you feel any different that night? Did you feel any any change in you? Um, no, I mean, you know, just just having that mental focus and, and and being ready for fights. I mean, every time I go in there, it's just turning that switch on like, okay, this is it. This is what I work for. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to look at it like like going to school. Mm -hmm. When you go to school, you know, you Go, you listen to your teacher, you work, you, you study, you do everything to prep for test. Right. And, um, you know, every time I'm, I'm in the gym, it's, it's like I'm getting ready for a test. And, um, you know, when I do get in that ring, I'm ready for that test. And that fighter's that test. I got to mm -hmm. pass. So, um, you know, uh, you get the proper rest, everything. You're, you're eating right. You're doing all the stuff you got to do. So when you get in uh -huh. that ring, now that focus is there, okay, I gotta pass this test. Right. If I wanna graduate, <laughs> I gotta pass this test. So yeah. that focus there, I just zone out to a whole different thing. And I get that a lot from a lot of people, like, hey, man, you're just such a nice guy. You're easygoing, you're always smiling. Mm -hmm. But when you're in that ring, it's just, yeah. wow, 
something yeah. different. I, I've never seen that look or, or that focus mm -hmm. in you. But that that's what that's what got me to where I'm at where where, you know, since I was a kid I've always was able to be mentally strong. You set that positive goal in front of you and there's nothing else that you that's in coming in. It, the focus is there and you know that that's attainable. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, you know, I, f I think that's true is when you, you have that belief, um, it gives you the strength. Mm -hmm. It gives you the strength. And you can also, when you go in that ring, no matter what else has gone on, you leave it. And then you go in, or you know, when I'd go teach school, there'd be maybe some things going on, like you know, in everyday life, your family, this and that. Yes. But when I went to the classroom, I couldn't let it carry on. I had to be there for the kids, and that's at a, that's another, it's not yeah. the level that you have to go in a but, ring and but, face a man. Yeah, that's, but that, that's your ring, and that's what your, all your schooling and all mm -hmm. your, all your work is, is in that classroom to teach, and mm -hmm. you know, that's your comfort zone. Is hey. And, and I, you want to do the best that you can, you know. And I mm -hmm. think if you have that in you, that that you you kind of leave everything and say, I, okay, now you're mine. I, I need you know to give you this yeah. information. Cool. Okay, one last question, and then we're going to get started. Um, everyone in Gilroy is proud of you. I mean, I'm proud of you. The <laughs> town is proud of you. Um, and also now, probably there's many people around the world that um, respect and look up to you. You're a role model for lots and lots <coughs> of young people. If you had a, a word of advice to um, the people that, you know, men and women, young and old, what would you say to achieve success? If there's just a statement that you have or a... Um, you know, put God first and everything after that, uh, uh, you know, you got to have that focus, that mental focus, that mental strength mm -hmm. and believe in your heart that whatever you're going to do is going to get done. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I'm only 27 years old and, and I accomplished so much. Uh, you know, I've gone through uh, uh, battles of cancer with my wife and, you know, through grueling, tough boxing matches and, and you know, the business part of boxing, the boxing part of boxing and fought world championship fights, HBO, pay-per-view, Showtime, you name every network I've been on. And, um, you know, all that, doesn't happen not unless you believe in yourself and your heart that you're gonna get it done and and have that focus on 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 and that drive of having it you know there for you to grab I mean you got to get out there and just go out there and do it okay that's awesome so now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go from the ring to the studio <laughs> to the studio to the studio so today we have a portrait um, of you and what we did is take a, um, a picture that I have in the back, and we actually uh, posterized it on a computer and screened it so that it's now on a canvas, and we also are going to shoot on some paper. Cool. And then this image is pretty much we're going to shoot some color into it and make it a little bit more powerful, pop it out. So in the airbrush, I have a couple of examples. I'm going to have you just maybe step aside for a sec. Um, and this one, I, I've been airbrushing a long time. An airbrush is kind of the same thing as spray pans. I mean, it's, it's just a mm. finer tuned thing. There's two ways to do it. You can freehand and you can also use stencil or you can combine them. And I like to combine them. So today we'll do a little bit of both. If this is an example, um, what I did is I cut stencils, blocked it off. But you can see how clean the eyes are. You can yeah. see that there's a, there's a definite line where one color stops and another starts. So that is by doing a stencil. Then in these areas, it's all freehand. This uh, painting over here, there's a lot that's going on with it. Again, this was stenciled out uh, so you can have, you know, the background. And then all that background was freehanded just by taking and shooting with, you know, um, any way I wanted to do it. Okay, now we're at um, the stage where we're going to cut the stencil. And your image is on, <clears throat> mm -hmm. on paper, and it's actually under a piece of glass because this is a little hot tool. Mm -hmm. And if we have this acetate on top and we want to burn through the acetate, we don't want your picture to melt. Oh, okay. So we have to protect it with some glass. So we put the acetate down, and this is just a piece of... Um, plastic, and this is a burn tool that's actually made for this. 
And I, it, when I was at school, we used to cut with X-Acto knives. This is the first time I've ever used this was for your picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different values, the lights and the darks. And in this one, uh, there's like a light value here, a light value here, here, here. And we're going to, and then a medium value, which is kind of a darker gray, and then a darker gray, and then almost a black. So each one of those areas we're going to cut around. So it's going to be like a puzzle. And we don't want to cut through the side or anything. We want to cut everything. So it's just like a puzzle. Each piece will come out. Oh, okay. So the idea is you put this thing down and hold it just a little while. And all of a sudden, can you see it melting? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. And it has to be straight down. So it kind of is like, it takes a long time because you have to, you can't just whip around it. You have to let it melt through? You have to let it melt through. So we, we're going to cut, this section would be your hair. We cut your hair out. And each time you do this, can you see how I'm following that dark? Yeah. OK. So you just go around each piece until it's all done. All right, now we're in front of the cutout uh, stencil that's placed over your image. And what we're going to do is we're going to shoot color into it. But before we get started doing that, I want to actually show you what the airbrush looks like. This is what we're going to be using. It's a single action airbrush. Um, it, I use these in school. They're like workhorses. I had some uh, double action, and the, there's a little needle that goes through, and they would always get clogged. This hose screws into this really tight, and it goes to a compressor, which is in the other room, uh, for sound purposes. This releases the um, ink or whatever you're shooting out, and it comes out through this tiny, tiny little hole in here. This area that twists controls how much flow. So the more of the screw th area you see, the more mm -hmm. flow. So it's all about pressure, and you'll just learn that. I know, you know, over the years, you just get used to it. But as mm -hmm. you know, just starting, we're going to start with something real simple. So. We've cut everything out, and uh, now we're just going to start on this. So you got to get used to how to do that. So what this is is a little bottle of, it's actually airbrush acrylic, and it fits into here, OK, like that. And the way you're going to hold this, I like holding it with one hand. Some people do this mm -hmm. because this is not hooked on. So if you don't hold it, it's going to fall on the floor. Oh, OK. So I always hold it like this. So I grip it like this. So I have my hand free. My other hand's right. free to do whatever I want with it. All right, Robert, why don't you just shoot just across to get a feel of it? All right, now stop right that and move back. Back farther. Right there? Yeah. And now move back even farther. There you go. Oh, yeah. OK, so stop. See the difference, how thick and, and dark that is? Yeah. And see how light that is? Uh -huh. So close and far make a big difference. See how fuzzy this line is? Uh -huh. All right, we're going to hold this. And this is the secret to using a stencil. And I'll do it first. And this is why we keep our hand free, because we can mess around with the other one. I'm going to put this here. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, let, they shoot above it. Uh -huh. If you shoot above it, it gives you a funky edge. So what you want to do is always think of hitting the stencil. Uh -huh. That's a real secret. So okay. watch. I'm just going to hold this. And this easel is not. Well, I'm going to get it where I can <laughs> you get to see it. And I'm going to hit the stencil. All right. Oh, yeah. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Because if I didn't hit the stencil, I would have that. Now watch this. This is just ripped paper. Why don't we rip the metal? Just in the back. Hold this up. Hold this side up. And try to shoot right here. Hit right there. And what will happen is you're going to get some real nice. Just hit the paper. Don't hit the other. Okay. Oh yeah. Not that nice. Yeah, it's cool. Looks yeah, like, and then looks you like can, little mountains. You can, you can take it and move it aside. Now do this. And hit the, hit that. 
hit the paper. Because that's what gives it the shading, that automatic shading. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can keep doing that. You can keep messing with it. You know, with um, the blonde woman in the background, uh -huh. what I did is I just took an edge of a paper, and you can see the, and I just shot like, and then you can, you know, do all kinds of cool. And I'm oh. hitting the stencil. I'm not even hitting the paper at all. Yeah, pretty much that's all overspray that way. Right, the okay, overspray. Cool. That's that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, now we're ready to actually shoot on your portrait. Okay, so all this is cut. Remember, we cut the acetate out. So we're going to take the background off. So now this is the actual picture, and everything else is covered. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to remove this. What we practice with on here, we're going to now transfer to this. Remember, the farther back, the better, and just an easy, even spray all the way across. And we use the red because your color, your trunks are red, so we really want to emphasize that. In, in your, and red is a very, very um, emotional color. I like using red because when I bloody these guys up, my shorts <laughs> don't look all bloody. <laughs> so. All right, that's good. That looks good. So now we added some black to the red, and we're going to actually push this back a little bit, make it a little darker so it's not quite so vibrant. OK. So it's pretty wet under there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it, if that's OK with you, and then oh, we'll let it dry. And I'm really seeing a lot of. What, what I want to do around here, I'm going to actually freehand it right around you. So that'll be a drop shadow. Using that technique where I'm hitting the stencil and just letting that overspray. Can you see where I'm just yeah. hitting the stencil? I'm not hitting the paper at all. That's it for the red. Now we're going to wait for this to dry and uh, switch colors. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the blue and we're going to do some test paper showing how to shade hitting the stencil again and what a difference it makes when you actually hit the stencil and not go for the, the space, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two. First of all, I'm going to shoot one just filling it in, which is what you do not want to do, okay? All right, you don't really want to do that because what we want to do is we're going to shade your arm and stuff, so we want it to have contour. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to just go right around the stencil, leaving that empty. And the overspray will go into it. All right. The difference is going to be one of them looks flat. This one looks flat because it's solid. This one is darker, darker, lighter in the middle. So it actually looks round. Can you see the difference? Uh -huh. So that's kind of what we're going to do with your arm. We're going to make it look contoured. So now what we've done with the portrait, we're, we're actually looking at this as a model. We sprayed the red already. And now we're going to go for the green, OK? So yeah. what I've done is on that acetate, I've uh -huh. taken out all the green areas. So these areas are exposed even though you can't see, this is still acetate here. We put the acetate back on top of the red. Now we're going to go back and spray the green. What we just did with the moon, where we actually went around the stencil, you want to make sure you hit here, not in here. Because in case you get that blast, you don't want that okay. on your arm. So you're going to just take it, and I'll just do one run with it. I'm going to crank it down a little. I'm going to get a little bit closer, but I'm hitting the acetate, and I'm doing one Mo mo movement. I'm not stopping, starting, stopping, yeah. starting, stopping. Just a constant flow through. And then what will happen is even though this is going to be really dark, you'll still be able to see a contour when we do it this way. Just hit that stencil, go around it. One movement. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And you're going to get the contour right there on the arm. That elbow will start popping. Let's do it right in here, too. you got the stomach is dark green. And we'll actually fill it in later. All right, I think that's enough. We have some other areas in here that we'll, we'll continue to do. All right, we are in the process of airbrushing this large picture of Robert. 
but it takes a lot of time to move air, all the acetate off, put it back, wait for it to dry, spray it. So in this show, we're going to cut to the chase, and we're going to just take a look at a prototype that I did. Um, and I actually shot all the colors. So you can see how layered this is and taped up. And, and what happens is you keep pulling these off, and you really don't know what's underneath. So after it's all done, it's kind of like a surprise when you sure. take it off. <laughs> and you just hope nothing leaked. So we're going to take a look at it and see what it looks like. Wow. So there it is, Robert. There's your uh, portrait. And um, in oh, the larger great. one, what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll hit it a little harder here so you'll even move out farther. Probably do some freehand in here to actually you know, mold it a little bit more. But um, you like the colors? and Wow, it looks great. I love it. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I, I'm, I'm excited. And actually, on this one, you'll have your own, you know, work on it, too. Yeah. So it'll be... Can't wait to see what that looks like after. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Me, too. <laughs> me, too. So um, anyway, you can see the back, all the pieces, a little puzzle. It's almost yeah. like another little portrait. So we'll stick this there. Um, we're going to end the show now and just uh, want to ask if there's any final thoughts, um, anything um, you want to say? Yeah, I just want to congratulate you on Woman of the Year of Gilroy. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. It's uh, really an honor for me, and it's an honor being with you, too, because yeah, you, a, you make Gilroy proud. Too. You make Gilroy proud. We're so proud of you. Hey, it's an honor being here, too. Uh, you know, I've known you for so long and now on your show, so... Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. happy to be here. And yeah, well, thank you hey. very, very much. And I'd also like to thank the uh, wonderful crew, Gavilan College crew, um, Joe Cardinelli, Marilyn Abad Cardinelli, and everyone behind the cameras. We love you very, very much. And we're just going to say ciao for now. You got to say it with me. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Together. Okay. Ciao, ciao for now. For now.